Welcome back to the Shivo Podcast. We are back with a new episode, which is going to be the last one for this series. So stay tuned for the next one. So today we are going to talk about your purpose as a wife. Okay. Your purpose as a wife. And that means align again to biblical, um, biblical instructions to Rebecca and Isaac story. Um, first of all, if you read, I'm not even going to say if you read the story, because at this point we're at episode number four, you should have read the story of Rebecca and Isaac because it is, it's not even about me. Okay. It's about what God assigned me to do through the series. So please, again, if you have not watched episode one, two, and three, please go back, watch those, read your Bible, specifically the story of Rebecca and Isaac in Genesis 24. Okay. And then you can come back. And then you can like, subscribe, and comment, all right? So anyways, back to what I was saying. So um, your purpose as a wife. So when you think about it, Rebecca was assigned to be Isaac's wife. So the fact that she was assigned to be uh, Isaac's wife, she had a big purpose on her life because her purpose was directly aligned to God's promise to Abraham, right? Because Abraham's son, Isaac, which was the promise of God directly, Isaac was a miracle, right? Abraham didn't believe that he was about to have Isaac, which made him have, an, um, made him have another kid with this woman. Anyways, long story short, Isaac was the promise. And the fact that Rebecca is meant to marry Isaac, Rebecca married Isaac, became one flesh with Isaac, meant that her purpose was greater than it was supposed to be prior to meeting him, Okay. And what I want you to understand is how important when they say that two of them become one flesh. It's not a joke. When they become one flesh, there's a lot of things that comes together and align together for the purpose of the kingdom, for the purpose of your future, for the purpose of your life. If we go to, and I'm, uh, yeah, Genesis 24, verse 60. They gave her this blessing as she parted. Our sister, may you become the mother of many millions. May your descendants be strong and conquer the cities of their enemies. Okay. And that's what the family pronounced on Rebecca. Just to put you in a context. That's what the family um, pronounced and declared over Rebecca's future, over Rebecca's life as she was about to leave her home. Right. And go to meet Isaac. And, and I do wish that the Bible had more details with every single, every single story. You know, there's people that, for example, their story is like three pages. And I'm like, I want to learn more about that person, you know. And it's the same thing with Rebecca. I'm like, I wish there was more details about her becoming Isaac's wife as there is. But anyways, it is what it is. We got the Holy Spirit to still understand the story and to understand the meaning of certain things. So anyways, so what I want to say to you is that first, in order to know your purpose, okay, you need to have a strong relationship with God. And when I say strong relationship with God, it's not just saying, oh, I'm a Christian. I go to church on Sunday. Going to church on a Sunday is not enough. Okay, trust me, there's people who don't even go to church on a Sunday. And I'm not saying don't go to church. Okay, I'm just stating facts. That they don't go to church on the Sunday. And their relationship with God is stronger than someone who actually goes to church on a Sunday. Okay, so just saying church is not enough. Okay, you need to have a daily relationship with God. You have to look at God as, um, you know, the church is God's, is it's his bride, right? So look at it as a relationship, as a married relationship. The same way that you want to spend time uh, and your relationship with your husband, he wants to spend time in relationship with you, getting to know each other, stay in communication, um, remain in intimacy and all of that. It's the same way that you want to be with Christ, because at the end of the day, you need that relationship in, uh, in order to have your spiritual eyes open, in order to have your discernment, in order to be able to really understand every single calling and purpose on your life so if you're missing that relationship if you're missing the, the 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 point of spending time um and feeding into that relationship giving what you need to give in that relationship you you have you have to understand you cannot go through life without this and expect to walk in your purpose 
especially as a wife, because as a wife, it's a calling. It's literally marriage is something that God designed. So how can you walk into something that God designed without having a relationship with the creator, the one who created marriage, the one who assigned marriage in your life? It doesn't work like that. Okay. And number two, once he reveals to you the part, like your purpose, uh, the calling on your life, you have to be suited up. Okay. Suited up, put the full armor of God over you. Listen, this verse is not just a verse just like that, but it's really a declaration that you should say on your life, declare on your life, on your husband's life, every single day. Do not walk without the armor of God, okay? Because the enemy, <laughs> you think, listen, the enemy is smarter than you think he is, okay? The fact that now, or if you don't, that's okay. But let's say, okay, God has revealed to you, okay, this is what I've called you to do. This is the purpose. This is, this is what I want. I want you to walk, um, the path that I want you to take. And I want you to walk. You think the enemy is just going to stay there and smile at you and be like, congratulations. No, he's not. <laughs> he's not. Cause uh, listen, he just waits for you to realize that and for you to think that oh well now i know my calling so everything's gonna be great no 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 he's gonna do every single thing things that you don't even expect him to do to make sure that you do not walk into that purpose because at the end of the day you walking through that purpose is not gonna do him any good okay you're doing it for the kingdom you're doing it for god you're doing it for great things but the enemy hates he hates everything that has to do with God. He hates everything that has to do with God's kingdom. So you have to be careful. You have to keep your eyes open. You have to stay prayed up. You have to be fasting. You have to be um, uh, fighting and making sure that you stand on solid ground, which is Jesus Christ. Okay. Do not do this without God. Some people, even though their purpose was called by God, they go and try to do it without him. Don't be that one. Okay. Do not be that one. You need to be suited up. You need to be in relationship with Christ. You need to be having the Holy Spirit within you, which guides you, which going to instruct you, which going to teach you exactly what you need to, you need to do through that purpose. All right. If you read here, and I never know how to pronounce that book, so excuse me, okay? But Deuteronomy 32.30 says, How could one person chase a thousand of them and two people put 10,000 to flight unless the rock has sold them, unless the Lord had, had given them up? And that verse, especially the past few, mo few months, I love that verse so much because I never truly took the time to read every single word because for me it was like okay well if i'm alone you know i can chase it i, I can chase a thousand but if I, if we're two we can chase ten thousand but it's not chase listen how could one person chase a thousand of them and two people put ten thousand to flight put ten thousand to flight means making them run away making them flee as for a thousand you chase them you're running after them ten when you're two you put them to flight. They flee from you. Do you understand the power of two becoming one? Do you understand the power of you coming together with your husband? It's stronger than what you see. It's more, it has more meaning than what you can, when you, what your human eyes can see. It has a strong power over the spiritual world and the enemy knows that. Okay. He knows that he is not dumb. Okay. He is not dumb, okay? He knows that. He truly knows that. So you got to be careful with that. And one thing that I want to take the time to say, okay? Be careful with the spirit of pride, okay? Be careful with the spirit of pride, especially after knowing the calling upon your life. OK, especially after knowing what God has called you to do as what your purpose is as a wife. OK, because what happens, especially us women through, well, we're in 2024 now, let's be honest. OK, now it's all about woman power, independent, uh, being your own boss and stuff like that. And I'm not saying anything bad. I am my own boss. I have my own business. I'm an entrepreneur and stuff like that. 
But we have to be careful and not forget that we are not the leader, okay? Especially in marriage, we are not the leader. The husband is. He is the head of the house. We are called to be submissive to him. But why am I saying that? That to not let the spirit of pride. It's that sometimes we meet. You, you can meet someone. You can meet a man. And that man, let's say God assigned him to you. But you look at him and you look down at him and you're like, well, you don't have the degree. You don't have that relationship with God like I do. Like your prayer life is not leveled at uh, at the same level as me. And you look at all of those criteria. Remember that list? Okay, remember that list? Episode number one. Was it episode? Yeah, it was episode number one. So anyways, so you look at that guy, at that, at that man and you look down at him and you all you see is flaw. All you see is sin. All you see is his past. All you see is... um. Everything that you have that he doesn't have, that's pride. Okay, that is straight up pride because you think that you're better than him. But you forget all the sins that you did. You forget your past. You forget that God had to pull you through darkness, that God had to pull you through who knows where. But do you also remember all of those stories in the Bible? Don't we serve the same God? The same God, listen. Jesus died on the cross. It wasn't just for you, okay? Yeah, wake up, okay? It was not just for you. He died for him too. That poor guy, okay? And I'm not saying poor, like, I'm, you know what I mean. <laughs> Listen, Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of us. All of us, not just for you, okay? And it's not because you have a higher degree, you have a higher salary or whatever, that this man cannot be your husband. God is able to change anyone just like that. Look at Joseph. Look at David. Look at Saul, the one who became Paul. And you think that God cannot do anything <laughs> with this guy? Listen, and I'm not saying now, oh, give a chance to every single guy that shows up who doesn't look. No, no, no. I'm saying that if God has clearly stated or maybe... He hasn't stated it yet, but he's bringing someone to you. That's why it's so important to have that relationship with God. Because if you truly have a relationship with God, you're not going to make a decision without consulting him first. Okay. So if a man like that shows up to you and you're like, mm, I'm not sure because this, 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 and that. No, 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 no. Pray, repent for your pride, go to God speak to him and he will he will align you he will tell you what you need to do he will tell you what decision you need to take all right and anyways what i want really for you to understand through this is your purpose as a wife has a stronger meaning than you think okay it's not just about you yes it's about your husband but it's not just about your husband it's about his kingdom okay you know i always say that it's about his kingdom because it truly is it's about his kingdom. He died on the cross for you, not for you to chill around and do what you want to do. No, 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 no. He has a purpose for you. He has a purpose for your husband. And it's always going to be a line at the end of the day because you guys are meant to be one flesh. You guys are meant to... <laughs> wow. You guys are meant to become one. One. Okay? One flesh. That means no more separation. That means that there's when you look... It's no longer two, but it's one. So whatever ministry you're called to, look at God. Ask God, what is my purpose as a wife, as a leader in this ministry, or whatever he called you to do in life for him? Well, it's always going to be for him at the end of the day. Sometimes you think that, I don't know, you're, I don't know, you have a, a hair business, and you think, oh, I'm just doing hair. No, 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 no. Trust me. Every single person you meet, you have an assignment. Do not ignore your assignment just because you think that you're just doing your job. No, no, no. Every single um, area that you step your feet in, you have an assignment. So make time. Take time to ask God, what's my assignment right now? What's my assignment in the current job that I have right now? You have a purpose as a wife, as a woman, as a daughter, as a mom, as a, as a sister, you always have a purpose no matter what. If you don't know it, then you need to seek God. Don't seek the answer towards men or towards Google. 
oh, what's, uh, what's my calling if I have those talents? No, no, no. Google is not the Holy Spirit. AI is not the Holy Spirit, okay? Seek God. God himself will reveal it to you, and then you will truly walk into the purpose of your life. All right, ladies, so you have a wonderful day, and it's beautiful weather now. Summer is here. I'm not a heat kind of girl. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a rain girl all day, all night. Anyways, all that to say, enjoy the beautiful weather. Enjoy the summer. Uh, I will see you on the next episode as we end the series here right now. Stay blessed. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Stay blessed. Thank you.